um, of what to do, but the way we start is very critical. The way we begin is very important. I was speaking to some people this morning and I said to them, I said that there is something about this year that kind of feels like 2020 to me, not in the sense of a pandemic coming, but in the sense that Satan has, or the kingdom of darkness, has invested so much into the things that they want to see birth in this year. I said, but the thing is, in the midst of all of that, the Lord always has his own plans. The Lord always has his own desires. The Lord always um, has his own equipping plan that he has already put together to enable his people enter into the fullness that he has. So what we are doing in the next 21 days is positioning ourselves to enter into all that the Lord has pre-programmed for us, to enter into all that the Lord has designated for us, to enter into all that the Lord has made available in this year. Because you see, it is possible to enter the year 2023 in terms of calendar, but not enter the year 2023 in terms of resources, purpose, and power. So what we are doing here is ensuring that every part of our life literally enters the year 2023 so that there is no part of us that is left behind. You know, we are entering this year with prayer and fasting so that we will have the necessary clarity that we need to be able to make decisions this year, you know, to be able to make decisions that are critical, not just for our lives, but even for the destiny of the heavens. So it is not us that will determine what will happen. But what we are doing is partnering with heaven to ensure that the things that God has preordained before the foundation of the world come to pass. That's why we're here. That's why we're praying. And so, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we consecrate and we dedicate this time to you. You know, and I just want you to lift up the next 21 days to God, because it is not by power, it is not by might, it is by the spirit of the living God. The Bible declares that after Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, that the enemy came and tempted him, and we see the temptations that were placed before Christ. And I need you to understand something, that just because you have entered into a season of fast does not mean you have overcome. The fast prepares you for what is coming. The fast empowers you for what is coming. The fast gives you the capacity to handle what is coming. The temptations that will come after the next 21 days and the way you handle them and the way you maneuver through them will determine the power you will walk in for the rest of 2023. Because for some of us, the moment we enter into the end of the month and we enter into February, the enemy is going to begin to posture certain adversities in front of us that will want to weaken and paralyze us so that we are unable to galvanize ourselves to do what God has called us to do. But you see, what we're doing right now is we're praying and preparing. So I want you to dedicate the next 21 days to God and just begin to pray and say, Father, I lift myself up to you. I lift myself, spirit, soul, and body to you, God. Father, I just ask that you would empower me by your spirit. Lord Jesus, I consecrate the, the next 21 days. I dedicate them to you, Jesus. I know it is not by my power. I know it is not by my mind, but I know it is the Holy Spirit that will quicken me. Lord God, I prepare myself for you. Lord God, I position myself for you. Lord Lord God, I dedicate myself to you. I decree and I declare, Lord Jesus, that my heart is consecrated unto you. I come to you, Lord Jesus, as the, the, the bride that meets her bridegroom. I come to you as a lover prepared to meet her lover. Lord Jesus, I declare that nothing else and no one else compares to you. I declare, Lord Jesus, that you are worthy of my attention. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. If you're lying on your bed, stand on your feet because we are setting the pace for the things that are to come. We are opening doors this morning and we are declaring to the heavens that we are ready. This morning is for the laying of foundation, for the opening of doors, for the release of grace and the anointing that is needed to run the race that is coming. And so Lord Jesus, you are worthy of my attention. Lord Jesus, you are worthy of my passion. Lord Jesus, you are worthy of my dedication. I commit 
myself to you. Kera mando ko pesu le valate. In don kapande vrya nado ko posi. Ragen de brando skunte mira nada kampatuza. Ei la vando brende kirondos ke paradei shata. Oh jalande ingranos ki mante le velekita. Raga de le kura pashante le vrya dons ke parandeinda. Oh you are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Rane makonza pale diva gora de basha ne la madon kataya. Indo so le bare agados ke le panda la diva ka. La dons ka palate ka zita va. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Bashala Velekelo no Mosanda Kahai. And you know, right now, I just want you to begin to ask the Holy Ghost to give you strength. Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you supernaturally to be able to fast. Ask Him to empower you. You know, it is possible for the Holy Spirit to completely take over your system. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to completely take over your desires. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to completely take over every part of your body, every part of your being to saturate you. He can regulate your organs. He can regulate your thirst, your hunger. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to do this. So I want you to just begin to say to him, Holy Spirit, I want to fast. It's as simple as that. Holy Spirit, I want to take the next 21 days to just wait on you. Holy Spirit, give me the capacity. Holy Spirit, help me to be able to live up to the, to the things that I have to do, to the requirement of my consecration in the season. Father, I present myself to you and I ask that Holy Spirit, you give me the grace. Show me the things that I ought to do. Father, show me the ways that I need to go. Show me the things that I need to stay away from. My God, I, I, I truly want to make the move, oh God. I truly want to make the shift in the season. So I ask that you empower me supernaturally with all that I need, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. The next thing I want us to pray about is that I want you to just um, today while I was um, praying and preparing for the day, the Lord began to say to me that at the beginning of this meeting, um, we, I should lead the people into repentance. And the Lord was speaking about the things he asked us to do in the year 2022. God said, you see, people are going to get on that call that want to receive direction for the new year, that want to, you know, thrust themselves into what I have for them this year, into the plans that I have. He said, but I don't want to tell them anything about what I'm, I'm going to do this year. And I said, Lord, why? Why, why? why don't you want to tell them? I thought that you want to reveal. He said, no. He said, there are so many things I told them last year, and they did nothing about it. They did nothing with it. And the Lord said to me, there are people on that call that I trusted with dreams. I trusted them with visions. I trusted them with assignments. I trusted them with the destiny of nations. He said, and they did nothing about it. I gave them um, prayer projects that they, they didn't live up to. I gave them assignments to cover people and they never covered them. I told them about people I have on the field, missionaries, ministers, and I told them, don't let these people suffer. Don't let them hunger. He said, they never did what I asked them to do. He said, there are people I told to start ministries last year. They didn't start it. Businesses, I gave them ideas and initiatives. They never lived up to it. He said, and now they're gathering to me again and asking me to speak. He said, I will not speak. He said, the people have to repent. Now, to repent is the word metanoia. And metanoia doesn't mean, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Oh, God, you know, okay, okay, yeah, yeah don't be angry. I won't do it again. No, that's not what metanoia means. Metanoia literally means um, change your mind, to change your mind, to change your mind. And so every time the Bible spoke about a repentance, the Bible was not just speaking about a feeling of sadness or a feeling of sorrow. The Bible was literally speaking about an intentional process that enables you to be able to make a completely different set of decisions. So repentance is intentional. Repentance is deliberate. Repentance is calculated. Repent 
repentance in itself is systematic. So for you to actually repent, you need to get into the understanding of what went wrong, what paralyzed you, what made it impossible for you to live up to the weight that was placed upon you. And then you begin to now say, okay, these are the things that went wrong. Now, these are the things I have to do right. Here is the gap between the two. Here are the changes I need to make in my life to be able to live up to the expectation. So repentance is not a feeling or an emotion. The feeling and the emotion is the beginning of the repentance. The feeling and the emotion is what drives you into a place of passion and enables you to passionately chase after the change. But the change is deliberate and systematic. So as we pray and as we repent this morning, I want you to keep it in mind what metanoia truly means and what the Lord means by repentance, because the, the theme for this year that God gave to me is a theme to shift shift and build and the Lord says I am shifting my people and you know and the shift is going to happen on different levels we're going to have global shifts we're going to have territorial shifts we're going to have national shifts we're going to have community shifts but we're also going to have individual shifts and in individual shifts we're going to have shifts in the soul realm shifts in the spirit realm shifts in the body realm and shift in the uh, 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 in the realm of the mind and the Lord began to say, all of these shifts are going to be happening simultaneously. He says they have to be able to keep their eyes on the turning and they have to be able to keep their eyes on the wheel of times and seasons. He said, anybody who is unable to keep their eyes on times and seasons will miss everything that I have for you this year. Because you see, the spirit of deception has already gone ahead to make people believe it is business as usual. The spirit of deception has already gone ahead to tell people, oh, it doesn't matter. All this new year prayer, all this new year resolution, these things don't matter. It is a deceitful spirit. And the Lord says, hey, 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 they need to wake up. They need to be able to move with the turning and the shifting. So the first shift that the Lord will have you make this morning is the shift of your heart to say, Father, I repent of everything that you asked me to do that I didn't do. You know, and for some people, the things that God said to you last year were even some things on the inside of you. And the Lord began to say to you, you have to deal with that spirit of unforgiveness. You have to deal um, with that spirit of lust. You have to deal with the spirit of fear. You have to deal with the generational spirit that is worrying your family line. And God spoke specific things to you last year. And you never dealt with those things. And God is saying, hey, listen, you have missed a timeline for manifestation, for actualization of what you needed to be able to enter into what I have for you this year. And so God says that the only way you are going to be able to jump in and to follow the, the, the frequency and the currency and the power of 2023 is that the God of redemption will enter into your yesterday. And by reason of your prayer, your repentance and your cry for mercy, the God of redemption will help you redeem redeem time, redeem um, your assignment, redeem your commission, redeem the instructions. So this morning, when I say you have to repent, I'm talking about you crying out to God for mercy so that he can go into yesterday and he can occupy the seasons that you missed. And in his mercy, he can cause there to be a calibration in your spirit that will make it possible for you to be able to see and sense and in some way be able to enter into what is happening now even though you did not fully fulfill all that you were supposed to do last year so wherever you are i want you to begin to pray right now if you can get on your knees get on your knees if you can lay flat on the floor lay flat on the floor and just cry out to god for mercy and say, Father, have mercy on me. The Bible says you will have mercy on whom you will have mercy on. So, Father, I, I, I just ask, Lord Jesus, that you look upon me this day and you look upon my weakness and you look upon my vulnerabilities. Lord Jesus, that you have mercy on me. In the year 2023, my God, I tried to do as much as I could, Father, but I 
failed in many ways. Lord Jesus, I, I, I was not able to live up to the expectations you had of me in, in, in certain realms, in my soul, in my mind, in my spirit, my God. I entered into depths of weakness and depths of pain and depths of trouble and inconsistency, but my God, the fact that you let me see 2023 is because I know, oh God, that you have a work for me. You have an assignment for me. My life still has purpose, oh God. It is possible for me, oh God, to still execute your will on the earth. And so, Lord Jesus, Korea Namakate, as Ganda Fakoba, as Ganda Fakoba, Kilene Moshke Mika Tude Kira Bakasonte. And so, Father, I ask that in your mercy, Mando Lady Kapa, this Govre in Katila da Kapa, that you will enter into my 2022 Bareke Zonte Kepa, that you will redeem, oh God, Mantos Gepaladea, the days that I missed it, the days that I didn't get it right, my God. Hila Toke Paruke Zonte Paya, that you will look upon my heart, Jesus, Baron Deskemele Diakaya, that you will see, Father, that I truly desire to be in step with you. I truly desire to be in step with heaven. I truly desire to be in step with Zion. Elene Koparika Sontakeya, the Lord Jesus, Makanto Bika Lucepaya, that the days that the conquer warm, the palmer warm, the locusts have eaten. That Lord God, you will redeem time for my sake. That Lord God, you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sakata kata kata kata. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And so I declare over you, Kaleboso de Vigalaha. That you would not miss the time of God for your life. I ask that the precious Holy Spirit, who operates upon the legality of the blood of Jesus, according to the mercy that is embedded in the blood, the mercy that is reserved for generation and generation, the mercy that is reserved for times and seasons, the mercy that has been allocated for the years of the earth. I ask that the mercy of God that was allocated for redemption as it pertains to 2022, that that mercy will be activated for our sake in the name of Jesus. That anything that the accuser is raising against us in the courts of heaven, we plead the blood of Jesus. Oh, we plead the blood of Jesus. This is our confession. This is our case. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Marakatezopa. Father, we thank you, because you are not limited by time or space. You are not limited, oh God, by the numberings of the earth. You are the God that is able to transcend the different realms and seasons. So, Father, we ask that in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will transcend, oh God, any limitation. Anything that is holding us back, anything that the enemy is raising against us, my God, I ask that you would enter into the calendar and Father, that for the sake of your blood, that you will give us the allocation that we are meant to have for this new year in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Oh, Rabakaze, I hope you are still with me. I hope you are still with me. I hope everybody is praying. If you are still here, just type and say, P.I., we are still here. You know, because um, this season, the Lord says, it is the year of the great shift. And it is the year of the release of his builders. So God is going to put the, his anointing upon a group of people to be able to build for his sake. So this is why we are praying these prayers. It is not because we don't, we, 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 we just want to be sober. It is because we understand the order of heaven and we understand that there is a way that a man enters into the power of God, enters into the fullness of God. Um, the next thing I want us to look at is how I, actually what the Lord said to me was, he says, I need you to start from where you stopped last year. I need you to start from where you stopped last year. So, but before we, we enter there, I need you to understand what this prayer reign will look like. In the next couple of days, I had, I had this whole structure and you guys know how God does prayer reign. You know, especially this January, February prayer reign is so strategic. It gives you what you need for the rest of the year. So Pastor Stephanie and I had sent her like a, I don't know how many page document, Pastor Stephanie, almost a hundred and something page document on things that, you know, I was going to teach about. And later today or earlier today, the spirit of God began to speak to me. And the Lord said to me, he said, just because I told you it's the year of the shift and the build, um, he said, does it mean I want you to teach them what you believe building looks like? And the spirit of God began to say to me, he said, this year, I want to teach you guys how to deal with the spirit realm. He said, I'm going to teach you how to tackle territorial spirits. I'm going to teach you how to tackle generational spirits. I'm going to teach you how to see um, the, the demonic realm clearly for what it is. And I'm going to open your eyes and I'm going to energize you to be able to, to combat and to fight the necessary battle. You know, he said that to me this morning because last night I had a dream. And last night I was praying and I said, God, you know, this year, this year, it just, it just feels like, uh, yeah, it, it, it's giving me 2020 vibes, you know? And I'm like, Lord Jesus, what, what do you have for us in prayer reign? What is going to happen? What do you want to do? And last night I had a dream. And in this dream, it, in my office, um, it was as though my office was repositioned and I could see the door leading to the staircase but right beside the door leading to the staircase there was another door that we built it was like poi people of influence built the door right beside the, the regular door and I, I remember looking at the door and thinking you know when did we build this door here you know and and the next thing but i was very easy you know but in the office we were achieving so much, so much was going on. But in the gym, I was so calm, I was so easy. You know what, I remember thinking to myself, ah, compared to the things we are doing, my ease is not adding up, you know? But it was like in the dream, I knew that there was a secret. And the next thing I would say, oh, you know, Pastor Linda, help me um, sort out so, 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 and so, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. And she said, okay, PI. And then she would go to this door that is beside the um the, that is beside the main door that was supposed to be leading to the stairs and she would open this other door and she would take the door and enter you know into a place now if you looked on the other side of the door which would have been like the staircase area there, it leads nowhere you know so she doesn't come out on the other side so it's like she comes out somewhere else and you know she she goes she comes back and by the time she comes back she comes back with a truckload of things a truckload of solutions and things just happen pop, 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 really quickly and i said to another staff oh Kachi, we need to do so so so, so for media he's like okay Pierre, and he will open that door and go in and by the time he comes back he's doing like incredible things and that was how we operated in the dream and in the dream somebody came to the office and you, you know especially was talking to me was obvious they were trying to figure out okay how how are they doing it you know what's going on what's going on how are they doing it and the person noticed the door the person was like huh, uh, i knew there was something else here so this is the door you take and she was going to open it to enter and i was like don't do it 
you know, there are rules, there are ways, you know, you operate where you're going there. Don't do it. And she didn't listen to me. She's like, I need to enter this door. So this is the door, Pierre, you didn't tell us. Bam, open the door, jumped in. And we didn't see her again, you know? So in the dream, I was like, oh man, I need to look for this person, you know? And then I went in, I opened the door. As soon as I opened, it was like, I went from the office and I entered a completely different universe. It was like some kind of utopia. I knew I had been transported to a different realm. And as I entered, you know, the first thing I saw were a bunch of little children in like um, a nursery school and I remember the scripture that says if anyone is going to come if anyone is going to be able to receive this kingdom you must come to me like a child and I knew that I had entered into the simplicity and the expression of the fullness of the kingdom life and as I entered into it there were like, it was like I had you know there were clues and there were there were things that I, that I needed to you know figure out so I had the code to everything and I, you know as soon as I entered I pressed this code and another door opened to me I pressed that code I said this password I said that I said that and that was how I was navigating through to go look for this person and as I as I found the person I found that the person had been captured so there I was negotiating her release and negotiating the deliverance so I can get the person to the other side and you know when I woke up killing my sovereign in the I was like holy spirit blah blah labor luku zande what is this Lord? And the Spirit of God began to speak to me about the manner of, of operation that is needed to succeed and to excel and to and to and to live powerfully in the year 2023. And he said to me that if you're going to be able to capture this year, if you're going to be able to indeed build for me this year, you must have a door that is opened into the realm of the spirit. It must be open, it must be so present, just like your normal door it must become natural for us to be able to enter into spiritual supernatural encounters it must become natural for us to be able to engage with the spirit realm it must become natural for us to be able to engage with the angelic host of heaven everything about our lives this year must become truly supernatural truly spiritual and he says that door needs to be open and he says where you went into was what was a clear picture of the spirit realm and look listen to me in there it was so beautiful everything was perfect my intelligence was like pam 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 everything was so clear I was moving at the at such great speed and the spirit of God said to me he said this is the only way this is the way he says say to them at prayer rain it is time to enter into the realm of the spirit to enter into the intelligence of the spirit to enter into the understanding of how the spirit realm works this is not the year to mix carnality with with spirituality this is not the year to mix carnality with a little bit of scripture, with a little bit of prayer. I know the Lord says, hey, if you're going to have an open door, you must be a son and a daughter of covenant. You must be a son and a daughter that understands the, the realm of the spirit. You cannot jump in because you feel, oh, it's PI's door. I will use it. You're going to get lost. You're going to be taken captive. You're going to be stolen. He says, this is the kind of door that you need to open yourself. He says, each one of them are living, breathing temples they must learn temple operation this is the year and so part of the things that I'm going to be teaching you in this prayer ring. so the Lord completely scattered the prayer ring curriculum and he began to rewrite it again by himself which is you know I should not be shocked by now but hey you know he still shocks me you know so Part of the things he began to um, give me notes for, and you know, I, I, by the grace of God, I was able to prepare at least notes for 17 days. And by God's grace, we'll clean it up, we'll adjust it, and we'll be able to send it to you guys. So part of the things that the Lord says we will teach about within the next 21 days are things like what it means to be anointed and how you can view by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Um, another thing he says I should teach you guys about is the operation of the bee versus the operation of the mantle of Deborah. Now, I know you may think, oh, it's for women. It's not for women because there is a parallel counterfeit version of it, which the enemy is trying to use to infiltrate the earth. And we have to be careful about it. So the operation of the bee versus the operation of the mantle of Deborah, part of the things that God says we should talk about is the belly. I know you're thinking belly, qua. 
Yes, our bellies. I'm going to teach you about the belly. I'm going to teach you about what it means and what dwells in your belly and all that the Lord wants to cause to spring forth out of it. Another thing we're going to look about is the spirit of Jezebel and how the spirit of Jezebel opposes um, the building structure of Zion and opposes your priesthood and makes it impossible for you to establish in purity the things that God wants to build through you. Another thing he said I should touch on is Beelzebub, um, the Lord of the Flies, is also the name for Satan and the a fallen cherub. So we're going to look at the spirit of Beelzebub. And when we look at it, we're going to look at things around your healing, your restoration, and not leaving any soul wound open. Another thing God says which I should teach you about is agents, agencies, and the agency powers. So basically, we're going to be looking at the agents in the spirit realm and the different agencies of heaven and the powers that they bear and where you stand, what it means to be an ambassador. Another thing that the Spirit of God said we should talk about is ancestral spirits. Yes, when we go into our ancestral lineage, we talk about ancestral spirits and their operations. We're also going to talk about dreams and visions very important. We have to touch our dreams and our visions in 2023. Remember I said today, I'm just laying a foundation. Tomorrow we truly begin. Another thing we'll talk about is the economy of the kingdom and um, and the different dispensations of, and, and the, how dispensations and economy intertwine. So I will teach you about kingdom economy and how to build according to kingdom economy. We're also going to look at the divine, you know, the divine life. We're going to look at um, divine appointments, divine timing, divine positioning, you know, all, all, all kinds of things. And we'll, go, we'll also look at the spirit of divination, you know, and how all of this operates even um, in this season and how we can want to fight against what God wants to do. We'll also look at demons, demonic oppressions, and demonic possessions. We'll also look at um, what it means to build um, indeed and what it means to make the shift. Also the spirit of Leviathan and the dragon and, you know, where does it come to play in this season and in all that, you know, God is doing and a lot more that the spirit of God is speaking about. So I want us to, um, I want us to get ready. I want us to position ourselves. I want us to be ready. And I want us to just say, God, you know, give me the capacity to receive everything that you have for me in this season. So another thing that we'll look at is blood and covenants. Blood and covenants, because the Spirit of God was speaking to me about how um, there are certain covenants in operation in the lives of people. And irrespective of how much we pray, um, if we don't pray accurately and break certain covenants, and when you think about covenants, many people um, are thinking about, you know, oh, covenant with, you know, a shrine somewhere that you made or your father made. Yeah, there are those covenants, but there are covenants we make every day, covenants we make with our eyes, you know, certain things that you have allowed yourself to see consistently and to look upon consistently and how it has bound your soul to the operation of those things and how even though you are you know trying your best to build and you are putting effort and money it's unable to bring forth why because you have opened a door you know to a system that you have made a covenant with your eyes to consistently behold you know so people have made covenants with vanity you know and all kinds of things we'll look at it when we get there and how you know we can um um deal with such covenants another thing the law says to look at is angels and the operations of the angelic so we're going to look at that also we're going to talk about the altar of Baal and the worship of Baal and what it looks like in our time and you know conquering all of that and how we can you know deal with that and truly build for God another thing we'll look at is barrenness and how barrenness um, the spirit of barrenness, we you know, can make it impossible for you to conceive and to bear all that God wants you to bring forth in 2023. And um, lastly is Babylon, you know, and we know that Babylon is Satan's, you know, should I say in the in his eyes, beautiful system that he has set up in the in the dark realm, you know, that has its operation up on lockdown on how they build, they exalt, they, they raise, you know, a new generation of people that the enemy wants to position, you know. So we're going to look at the operation of Babylon and Babel versus the operation of God because some of us are operating in a, a Babylonian system and we don't even know it. We don't even 
know that, you know, we have become partakers of a demonic system. So part of what the spirit of God is going to um, do with us and God is going to teach us in the days that are coming is how to break out of that system to establish God's own system. And so today, um, as we go, but before we go, because remember I said I'm setting the pace and we have just like 25 more minutes left. Um, before we go, you know, I, I just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we consecrate um, every single thing that we have um, said right now to you. We decree and we declare that this altar belongs to you, O God. We declare and we de decree that there shall be no interruptions to all that we are going to do in the next 21 days in the name of Jesus. We decree and we declare, O God, that we shall be preserved in health, in body, in soul, in mind, that all that you have proposed, O God, to teach us, all that you have proposed, O God, to infuse into us, Father, it shall be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we decree that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that no, there shall be no demonic of, um, uh, interruptions to everything that is raised on this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree and we declare, oh God, that your fire is upon the prayer rain altar. We decree, oh God, that your power is extended towards the prayer rain altar. We decree, oh God, that your anointing is upon this altar. We decree, oh God, that as we raise your word and as we go into teachings and prayers for the next 21 days father we decree and we declare that we shall we shall we shall, we shall enjoy supernatural miracles oh god and intervention of your spirit in our lives in the name of jesus we decree and we declare that we shall receive testimonies of suddenlies testimonies of suddenlies oh god as you begin to break the strongholds in our lives as you begin to release us into the revelation and realms of revelation we decree that in the mighty name of Jesus, that suddenly people will receive miracles and the, the, the long-standing issues in their lives will begin to bow in the name of Jesus. God will decree and will declare that there shall be a stirring of revival that will come out of this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we decree and we declare that people on this call um, will receive um, supernatural marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, people will conceive supernaturally, oh God. People's um, contracts will be approved supernaturally, oh God. People will come into communities and um, relationships, oh God, and fellowship, oh God, um, where, where they can be nourished and they can be strengthened. And it will happen divinely in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we declare that our minds and our hearts will be opened up, oh God, to be able to receive concepts from heaven, to be able to receive solutions from heaven, to be able to receive diagnosis concerning things that have held us back for so long in the name of Jesus. Lord, we decree and we declare that upon this altar, we shall receive supernatural empowerment, oh God, to be able to run the race. Even things that we have said before in 2022, I don't have the strength for that. I don't know how it could, we can do it, but Father, we decree that in the mighty name of Jesus, supernatural strength shall be released upon us in the next 21 days to fulfill the visions that we otherwise did not have the strength to fulfill. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare over you that the enemy would not sabotage the things that you will plan in this year. I decree and I declare that the enemy would not circumvent the anointing that the Lord is releasing upon this altar for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that the spirit of intercession and the spirit of warfare and power and prayer is released over your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that there is a stirring in your environment. There is a stirring in your heart. There is a stirring in your soul. There is an awakening in your spirit to be able to rise up in prayer in the season in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that you are covered and you are shielded by God and the enemy will not be able to intercept the signals of heaven that God is sending to you in the season in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that we are pulled into the council of heaven. We are pulled into the council of Zion. I decree and I declare that this altar is exalted into the realm of heavenly operation. It is exalted into the realm where God is Lord. I decree and I declare that the prayers that we pray upon this altar, they cannot be interrupted by the demonic host of hell. I say 
say that by the power of the Holy Ghost, that people are being anointed and people are being commissioned to run the race that God has set for them in this new season. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes upon us every day that we come here to pray. Oh, I declare and I decree that a new fire like the, that it is in the book of Acts chapter 2 is coming upon us every time we pray. The kind of fire that supersedes the, the, the problems in your household, the kind of fire that supersedes your background, that supersedes your failure, the kind of fire that meets you at the point of desperation, at the point of longing for Jesus. I decree that it is coming upon us in the name of Jesus. I speak to every problem and every bondage that held you down in the year 2022 that made it impossible for you to pursue Christ the way that you're supposed to. I decree that the anointing of God that came upon Elijah is coming upon us in the name of Jesus. I say we shall run, we shall run, we shall run, and we shall catch up with the chariot of God's fire in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that we receive supernaturally angelic assistance in this year in the mighty name of Jesus, assistance from the angelic host to be able to run the race, not just in the physical, but in the spiritual, in the mighty name of Jesus. Shambare katoze kregida baso freni bakatoze kapa. Shande de 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 mandoske paradika. Jevreni kaso keli baha. I decree and I declare that upon our minds is the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be able to receive supernatural downloads in this season in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that gateways are opened over this altar of prayer reign in the name of Jesus. Gateways of inspiration get ways of understanding, get ways of revelation, get ways of wisdom are opened upon this altar in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that any dark cloud in your house, any dark a cloud in your family, any dark cloud in your mind that has made it impossible for the mind of God to penetrate by reason of these prayers. Such dark clouds are being removed and shifted in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that there is a release of a new wind from heaven like it is seen in the Bible in Ezekiel. I decree and I declare that the four winds of heaven are responding now to our prayers. Hey, Go to Milikuzukapaya. Everything inside of you that was dead. Nakanto Pekeregaza. The spirit of resurrection is resurrecting it in the name of Jesus. Because you are here, even to the one who came, I was wondering, why am I here? What is it about this prayer ray? I said that the hammer of God is coming upon your heart in this season. It is breaking open the barren places, it is breaking open the dry places, it is breaking open the hard places. Your heart is receptive to the word of the Lord. It is receptive to the movement of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that this is our season for powerful impartation. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that we are receiving solutions for economies. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are receiving blueprints and downloads by which we can change our nations, by which we can change our continent. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I I declare that the Lord is expanding the boundaries of your habitation. I decree that in the name of the Lord Jesus, you are expanding to the left and to the right, to the front and to the back. In the realm of the spirit, you are increasing in weight. You are increasing in strength. That the measure of the anointing of God upon your spirit is increasing in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that you will run and you will not be weary. You will work. You will not faint in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that you are being elevated in vision and in the prophetic that in the next 21 days your eyes are open to see things that you have never seen before. Your eyes are open to receive divine revelation in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that we are positioned under the stream of God. We are positioned under the anointing of the Holy Ghost that is needed for the year 2023. I decree and I declare that the 
compass of God and the positioning of his spirit is in this altar that for every time that we rise up to pray that there is an aligning and a realigning that is happening inside of us in the name of Jesus you will not stray this year anything that troubled you in the years before they will not trouble you in this season in the mighty name of Jesus I decree and I declare that you receive supernatural capacity to rise up and wage war in the areas that you need to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, if you believe it, say amen. Raise those declarations over yourself. Raise those declarations over your life. I believe in Lord Jesus. 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 That my year is better than it was last year. If people thought that I ran last year, I will fly this year in the name of Jesus. I believe in Lord Jesus that you are greater than my limitations. Baba, I believe that the enemies that troubled me last year, they will not be able to come near me this year. Baba, you will give me bigger enemies this year. Because you will expand me in capacity to fight greater battles. I am poised to receive the fullness of heaven. I declare that my mind is poised to receive the fullness of God. I receive the explosion that is embedded within the word of the Lord as the word of God enters my spirit. I declare that I become God's explosive device across the earth. I am highly inflammable in the name of Jesus. Everywhere we go, we spread the fire of God. And uncontrollable fire is being released from our lives in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank, thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Shanda bakele de koseke de. Alangre gediakoske impalante, impalante, impalante ile koze veliata. Thank you, Holy Jesus, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We receive everything that you have for us, Lord Jesus. We declare that we ascend the hills of the Lord. We declare, O oh God, that we enter into everything that you have for us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. We have just a couple of minutes to go because these meetings will last for an hour, an hour, 30 minutes maximum. Before we go, you know, in John 7, remember I said, the Lord said, continue from where you stopped last year. And these were the meditations of my heart and my spirit last year. And the Lord in John 7 was saying, John 7, 37, he said, in the last days, the great day of the feast, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Remember, during the course of this um, 21 days, we'll talk about the belly. He says, but out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. He says, but this spake he of the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So from the scripture, Jesus was saying that if any man thirst, let him come to me. He says, I will give him water to drink. He says, if he believes in me, he says, as the scripture has says, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. He says, first of all, Jesus says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, so that means there are people that come to Jesus just because they are thirsty. 
There are some of us that are on this prayer ring call just because we are thirsty, not because we truly believe, just because ah, it's a new year. God, I want to get it right. God, hey, I want my family to be better. Ah, oh, God, I want my husband to be this, my business. I need money. Ah, but back this year, I'm believing you, I'm trusting you, just because we thirst. But there are two dimensions of, operating, of operation when it comes to the way we come to Christ. Some people come just for the thirst, but Jesus says, he that comes because he's thirsty, I will give him water to drink. So Jesus will give you water to drink. So why am I saying this to you? Because we are setting the pace for the next 21 days. I need you to decide who you want to be by the time January is over. And I need you to hear me. Because when we begin to roll into this year, I don't want you to be one of the spectators. I don't want you to be one of the people that will say, ah, we know, ah, I used to see this person on prayer rain. I used to see that person on prayer rain. Oh, I used to, no, 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 don't be one of the spectators. One of the greatest things I want people who work close with, closely with me is, please, you must recognize when I am moving. Don't ever imagine in your heart that the peer you saw yesterday is the peer with you today. Because overnight, I can make a major spiritual journey. I can arrive at a place in my mind where I realize where I am at loss, where I have made mistakes, and I will repent, and I will journey and make a journey of two years with the Lord. And then when I'm speaking, you are trying to pull me to where we were four years ago. I said, that's the biggest mistake you can make. You know, because you see, spiritual journey has nothing to do with physical time. Spiritual journey has everything to do with revelation and your willingness to trust the Lord to be able to carry you from point A to point B. It has nothing to do with physical time. There are people who have lived for a hundred years, but in the realm of the spirit, they only lived for 10 years because they stretched the journey of spiritual 10 years across a hundred years. But there are some people that have lived for 30 years, but in the spirit realm, they have relived almost 90 years. Why? Because they have allowed their every day. Like David says, they teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. You see, the wisdom of God is not just that somebody knows good things or you know what no that's not what wisdom is the bible was speaking about how god created the earth and how he established the foundations of the world and how wisdom was with him and how wisdom was holding the measuring tape and how wisdom was drawing the lines and how wisdom was doing stencil and he was working on the drawing board as god was calling the things to be so when the bible begins to begins to say take me to number my days that i might apply my heart unto wisdom he was saying that as a man is able to understand that every day is an opportunity, something happens to him. You begin to have a divine supernatural partnership and then wisdom comes and begins to walk beside you. Your ability to steward your days and to steward your seasons effectively is, is a fragrance in the spirit realm that attracts the army of wisdom, that attracts the workmen of wisdom, that attracts the bank of wisdom. The reason why certain kinds of of people can partner with your life and destiny is because you are stewarding your days very carefully. So I said to you, Kemando Kibaske Fika Dia Dadia Kapai, resolve now, Shande Kiparuga Zentakai, who you will be throughout the year 2023. Resolve now in prayer, resolve now in the spirit, resolve now in declaration who you will be in the year 2023. Tell yourself. I will not be a spectator. Tell yourself, I will not be the one that watches others ride upon the wings of the spirit in this year. But I myself will ride on the wings of the spirit. I will become the momentum of this generation. I will be the one that generates spiritual energy. Everywhere I go, I will carry the reviving fire and power of God. Resolve now. Because Jesus said there are two kinds of people. Some come to me just because the thirst. He says, when they come, I will give them to drink. Why? Because I'm a good master. I'm a kind God. The person cannot come to me and ask me for bread and I will give them stone. They cannot come to me and ask me for fish and I will give them scorpion. He says, I won't do that. I'm a good God. I'm a good master. He says, so when you come, I will give you what you are crying out for. He said, but there is another set of people 
who are not just saying, God, meet my thirst. He says, verse 38, he that believed on me, as the scripture says, so there are some that come because I just need water. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you can do. I'm not about to engage your sanctifications or, you know, circumcision or anything like that. I'm just coming because I'm thirsty. But he says, among the people that come, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So they are the ones that will come in this prayer ring and drink. But they are the ones that will come in this prayer ring and become rivers. They are the ones that will come and only quench their thirst. So you will have a spiritual awakening for the next 21 days. But there are some people on the score that in the next 21 days, you are not only being awakened, but you become the river of awakening for regeneration. He says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the two dimensions of engaging Christ in this January, in this prayer ring, is the dimension of thirst and hunger. And secondly, the dimension of expression, creation, and restoration. He says, he says that out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. And we know what the Bible spoke about concerning this water, that everywhere the water went, it healed the land, it healed the people, it brought about restoration. So there are some of us on this call that we only come and our test will be quenched. God will deal with the demons that are opposing you. God will deal with the things that are making it impossible for you to move forward. But some of us will now also receive supernatural capacity and will become God's restorative tools upon the earth. And I know that you are one of those people. So right now, I want you to begin to say, Holy Ghost, quench my thirst but also empower me to partner with you this year. Holy Ghost, quench my thirst, but also empower me to become your agent this year. Holy Ghost, quench my thirst, ah, but also empower me to be the one that you will use to change the spiritual and physical terrain of my nation. Ah, Holy Ghost, quench my hunger but also make me the bread that can feed generations. Holy Ghost, quench my hunger but also make me the one that will come and solve the hunger problem in my continent. Holy Ghost, use me as your weapon. Holy Ghost, use me as your battle axe. Holy Ghost, use me as your river system. Make me, oh God, the channels by which you will cause waters to break forth into the earth. Baba, I present my life before you. I am not giving up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Shankape, Shankapula, Tekeleda, Shandakere, Namakoroboko, Sante Faka, Holy Ghost, I position myself, Fante, Fante, Fatela, Barabiska, Ayayayayaya, the way that a pole is dug into the earth, I dig my feet into you this year, Ala Gonde Bereke Sokata, I dig the feet of my family, the feet of my children, the feet of my ministry, the feet of my businesses, I declare, oh God, that we are family rooted in you. I declare that by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, that my God, I will become the one. I will be like the announcement of heaven. Let everything that is within me respond to this dimension of collaboration with the Spirit of God and this level of collaboration with heaven in the name of Jesus. Come on, make those prayers. Tell the Lord that Baba, take everything inside of me. Do not only give me to drink, but also make me the drink for a generation. Do not only give me to eat, oh God, but Baba, put inside of me the food for my industry. Put inside of me the food for my government. Put inside of me the food for Africa. Make me the bank, oh God, for this world. Baba, do not only give me my need and my daily bread, but Baba, help me to meet the daily bread of people. Did you not say that I am your son? Do I not have the same 
nature that you have. The same God, the same God who gives daily bread is my father. So that means I have a daily bread configuration on the inside of me. That means I also have the capacity to give people what they need to feed on a daily basis. This year, 2023, I am walking in the capacity of my king in the name of Jesus. What was Jesus saying? He was saying that if you are thirsty, come, I will give you to drink. But when you drink, I will also do something in those who believe. Because you see, don't only drink this morning. Don't only drink in the next 21 days. Believe. Ah, what are you believing God for in 2023? What are you believing God? Do you have your eyes set? Do you have your eyes set that you want to become God's battle axe this year? Do you have your I said that you are going to be a sharp arrow that is shot out of the bosom of God. Do you have your eyes set that you are going to be God's healing hand extended upon the earth? Listen to me. I am not going to play with sicknesses, diseases, and demons in this year. I desire that I would be like a fiery sword that is released from the kingdom of heaven. He says today that believe. What do you believe? Ah, what do you believe? What do you believe? God has said that this is the year where you have the capacity to make multiple shifts. Do you believe it? The place you have been determining that you have to move away from and you have to enter into, do you believe that the grace is available this year? Do you believe that this is the year that you will start the things that God has called you to start? Do you believe that this is indeed the year where God gives you the initiative to build? Do you believe that God is releasing upon you the anointing of a holy to be able to build according to his patterns and his structures and his system. He said, when you drink, don't only drink, but believe. Ha -ha. Because some people will only drink and walk away, but some people will drink and believe. Come on, this season, drink and believe. Let everything that the Holy Ghost pours upon you on this altar, let it force you to believe. Let it um, make you believe. Let it lead you into the realm of faith in the name of our Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, if you believe, say, Lord, I believe. What are you believing God for? I need you to write it down this morning. Write it. If you are somewhere where you can write, write. God, I believe that you are going to make me the one. What do you believe God for? What are you trying to change? What are you trying to empower? What has God said to you you will achieve God with this year? What are you believing? Can you, can you state it? Can you write it? Can you, can you declare it? Lord, I believe ABC. I believe XYZ. What are you believing God for? Because Jesus says some people will only come and drink, but they have no faith. They have no belief that they can be the ones that are we use. So this morning, you need to believe God. Now, as you go further in, um, part of where we stopped last year was God speaking about offices and God speaking about us coming into the uniqueness of our calling and ordination. Because we have so many things we're going to talk about. I've listed all the things we'll do this prayer ring. I need us to just jump past these ones now. We have to finish last year curriculum so that we can enter into this year's actualization and manifestation. You know, so we don't have the time. So part of the things that the Holy Ghost was sounding and resounding last year is entering your offices. And he kept speaking over and over again and about how the, the mantle upon your life, you know, speaks about your peculiar spiritual covering and it designates you and it empowers you in your unique assignment. The Lord kept speaking about how the mantle and the office is called you into is how it serves to promote you in the realm of the spirit and how this office is like an official garment upon you and how it is what pulls collaboration, not just in the physical, but also with angelic hosts. The Lord began to speak about how your office attracts your unique allocation, either the allocation of people, allocation of resources, whatever it may be. The Lord also began to speak about how your office is eternal and spiritual 
but it is also your covering and it contains your unique ministry attributes. The Lord also spoke about how your office makes you devoted to God from whom the mantle you received has come from. So I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, you know, before I make this prayer, I need you to hear me clearly. The Bible says when he ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men. To some he made apostles, some prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, you know, and many times you hear these things and you think about them in light of what we now know church to be. But that's not what Jesus gave. What Jesus gave were designated offices that in themselves, they have resources. When you think about an office, when you hear the office of the minister, we're not talking about a title they write on paper. The office contains things like an assistant. The office contains a budget. The office contains financial allocation. The office has authority. The office has power. The office uh, has got all kinds of things. So when you hear to some he made apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, listen to me. God was not talking about a church building. God was not talking about Sunday service and him. God was talking about spiritual allocations and spiritual positioning. God was talking about power available to you in the realm of the spirit. God was talking about the collaborations you have with the angelic host. God was talking about the doors that you have the power to open in the realm of the spirit. So well, on this call, and you heard me talking about the office, the office, and you just thought, oh, okay. listen to me today. I want you to say, God, I receive the office that Jesus died to give me, I receive it right now. Father, I repent of every time that I rejected, every time that I neglected, every time that I deviated from my calling, I repent this morning. I say, I am sorry, Father. I honor what you honor. My office is so honorable that Jesus had to bleed for me to get it. He had to go to the depths of hell to snatch it, to give it to me. Ah, Baba, if you have called me in the grace of the apostolic, I receive it fully. If you have called me in the grace of the prophetic, I receive it fully. Come on, I hope you are praying. If you have called me in the grace of an evangelist, I receive it fully. If you have called me to be a pastor, I receive the pastoral anointing. If you have called me in the grace of a teacher, ah, Baba, I receive the capacity to distill heavenly information and to download it to my generation. Hear me, these offices are not for the church only, as you know church today. I don't know how to separate it. These offices are for the ecclesia, but it is not for the system of worship we have created. The ecclesia is a governing ruling body. So these offices empower you, whether you are in media, entertainment, business, anywhere you are. The pastoral uh, uh, dimension gives you the anointing in the spirit realm to be able to galvanize a people, to be able to carry your organization, to be able to lead in such a way that people want to work with you consistently. The apostolic gives you the capacity to break ground in the area of communication and communication models. It gives you the capacity to break grounds in education and to come up with new systems of learning. Listen to me. This morning, say, Lord, I receive my office. Lord, I receive the designations that you have for me. Everything that Jesus ascended to give me, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Forgive me for the times that I ran away from it ignorantly. Forgive me for the times that I rejected them. Father, I receive them in their fullness, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father, I just pray over everyone this morning. I ask Holy Spirit that even right now, Lord God, let divine angelic visitations begin to happen in their rooms, in their houses, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for people that have lost gifts and have lost um, certain operations of the anointing over their lives, oh God, because they were ignorant, because they were weak, because they did not know how to receive it and how to manifest it in different areas of their lives. Father, I ask that even right now, let the spirit of restoration come in and let it begin to restore to them everything they have lost in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, 
I begin to pray, oh God, that Father, um, you, 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 that you forgive us, oh God, for every time we have despised what the Holy Spirit has to offer, everything that Jesus died for. Father, forgive us, have mercy on us. We say we are sorry, we receive the fullness, and we say that in this year, Lord God, we will not despise our offices in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I move quickly. Part of the things also that the Spirit of God was speaking about last year was also um, us being able to step out and enter into everything that he has called us to um, in order for um, his will to be done. And the Lord was speaking about Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, H-U-R. And the Lord began to speak about the power of history. And you see, so as you cross over into the year 2023, um, I, I need you to sit back and begin to analyze your history. You know, um, this, uh, please, the power of history. There are a couple of things I have said this morning that I've said, write it down, write it down. So please make sure when you go back, you write them down. Get your notebook and write them down. Another thing is to enter into the power of your history. Because when the Bible began to say, um, speak about God, God said to Moses, it says, I have anointed Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, to be able to to build my temple for me. Listen, in this season of the builders and in this season of the build, you have to be anointed by God to be able to build this year, buildings that will not only last, but buildings that will also give you a reward in heaven. But you see, it wasn't just, Bezalel wasn't anointed simply because he was Bezalel. Bezalel was anointed because he was the son of Uri and he was the son of Or. And you see, um, the son of Uri, um, um, in, in the Hebrew, it speaks about, Uri speaks about um, in the shadow of God and Or speaks about the light of God. So Bezalel, there was something about the history of Bezalel that made it possible for him to be the one that God anointed to do his work. So I need you to understand that um, part of what the Spirit of God will be calling you to do is to be able to take record of the places he has brought you into and that he has um, made possible for those places to water and empower you for what he has for you in this season. For, for the next one minute, I want you to just take a moment to begin to thank God for your spiritual history, to begin to thank God for the journeys that you have had in the past 10 years and 20 years. For some people, you may say, oh, but PI, you know, things were not done the way that we were supposed to do in this place. It doesn't even matter. I don't, I, I don't know, I don't even know if Bezalel knew who his grandfather was. I don't know if Bezalel thought that his father was perfect. But one thing that Bezalel could not deny is that whatever they sowed in the Lord was what qualified him in his time to be anointed by God. So you need to be able to take record of your history. For some people, it is the history of your intercessory gift. For some people, it is the history of your prophetic gift, your prophetic journey. For some people, it is the history of how you receive and you learn the word of the Lord. It is the history of how you have learned to do business. And, you know, so for one minute, I want you to begin to take record of the history and remember once again, the paths that God has led you through. For some people, it may be, um, there may be some things that the Lord wants to correct in the next 21 days um, that have to do with your history. But I need you, if you have a pen, if you have a paper, I need you to write it down and to say, okay, you know, in this place, this was what I learned, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. In this place, this was what I learned. In this place, this was what I learned. Because all of these things in your history have a way of determining the position and the posture you are taking today. If you have written it down, I want us to pray. First thing I need you to pray about is say, just thank the Lord and say, Father, I thank you for how far I have come. Father, I thank you for all the people that have blessed me in the past years. I thank you for the paths you have led me through. I thank you, Jesus, for the ministries I have been part of. I thank you for the people I have gone into business with. I thank you for 
um, the lessons I have learned. I thank you for the mentors, the teachers, the pastors, every single person that has invested in my life. God, I thank you. I thank you for my father. I thank you for my mother. I bless you, Lord Jesus, for your wisdom and your intelligence by which you have put together this um, configuration called my life and my journey. God, I seek to acknowledge your wisdom in all of it. And I say, thank you in the name of Jesus. And right now I need you to pray and to begin to say, Holy Spirit, everything that was embedded in my history, every goodness, every gift, every promotion, every blessing, oh God, that I have either neglected, rejected, oh God, ignorantly, oh Lord. Father, I ask that in the name of Jesus, let them be appropriated to me today by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I ask that every inheritance, oh God, that I have by reason of covenant with the history, oh God, that you have set for me. Father, I ask, let it be released unto me now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I acknowledge that it is by your wisdom and by your intelligence, oh God, that you have set these things in place and I receive them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for restoration that just happened, oh God. And Lord God, I also ask that, Father, if there be anything, oh God, in the history that you need to remove, that you need to change, that you need to take away, oh God, um, so that that which you have predestined, Father, for your people will come to pass. God, I ask that you do it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I just ask, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you go into the history, oh God, and you begin to say, Set things right and you begin to set things in order and you begin to set things in place by the power of your blood in the name of Jesus. Part of the things also um, that it was, God said to um, um, Moses that he has given to Bezalel wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to be able to build for him. And he said, I've given him wisdom, which is the word binah. I have given him understanding, which is the word being, and it means accurate specifics for decision making. And so he says, I've given him knowledge, which is the word dat, which is a Hebrew word that means, um, it, 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 the, the word dat is a Hebrew word that is used for um, sexual intercourse, but it is different from the word lakar. The word lakar is for sexual intercourse, but it is sexual intercourse that comes from a place of lust. Oh, I just want it. I take it. That's the word lakar. You know, and a, a, a man just sleeps with a woman or a man sleeps with a prostitute. That's lakar. But the word dart is the Hebrew word for union and communion. To know and to see the innermost part of a person and to have a deep sense of intimacy. So when he says, I have given to him knowledge, I have given to him that, it means that he gave unto Bezalel the ability to have union and communion with God so that he will not only build for God, but he would also know what God's passions are, what God's desires, his innermost desire and his innermost yearning so that the things that Bezalel built were not just technically accurate, but they were also accurate in terms of God's desires so also that word understanding, which is the word being, is the word for accurate specifics for decision making. So Bezalel also knew accurately what God's specifics were. So I want you to pray and say, Lord, as I go through the next 21 days, I receive Bina, I receive being, and I receive that. I receive wisdom. I receive understanding for accurate decision making, and I receive knowledge the kind that comes from communion with you. Father, I receive it all so that I can be the one that you appoint to build for you in this season in the name of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you because we enter into the year 2023 in the fullness of your grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we go. I want to tell you that part of the last things the Lord was saying to me last year, you might have heard me say it, is the word mashal. 
And the word mashal is the Hebrew word for government. And it comes from the word for mastery. When God said to Cain, that sin is crouching at your door, but you must master it. It's the word mashal. And it's also the word for government. So every time we master, we rise in governmental authority. Please hear me. It is very, very important. Because in this year, 2023, God is going to supernaturally appoint people. And God is going to supernaturally thrust people into positions that they never imagined was possible for 10 years. But you see, what makes it possible for you to effectively walk in authority when God appoints you is mashal. When you have entered into governance, because governance and government for us spiritual people is not just a position that is put on you. It is who you become by reason of your person. Adam and Eve were blessed and Adam and Eve had been given dominion authority or they have been given dominion power, but what they did not have was mashal. And it is mashal that qualifies you to walk in that power that you have been given. So they had to qualify for mashal by reason of passing the test. It's the same thing that happened with Jesus. Jesus in the wilderness, when he went for fasting and praying, the reason why he was tempted was Jesus had to be qualified that he had mashal. In his qualification and passing the test, he showed that he understood he could carry a government and he had the capacity to bear the weight of God's government. So he then had the power, the authority to disseminate power. It is very important that we remember this because as you master things, all of the things that I will teach you in the next 21 days are for your mastery so that you become powerful, so that Satan cannot not only play you, but he will not use you as a pawn in his game. You will not be used by the enemy to achieve his aim. Because why? You would have grown in mastery and you will have governance. And as you grow in government, God then begins to use you. The word mashal is also the word for story. So God then begins to use you as the one who tells his story on the earth. That's the most important thing. Listen, we don't want to die and get to heaven and realize that we were telling a story that heaven did not recognize. And then God will say, well done. I'm happy you made it, but your story was not my story. So I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, that every one of us will come into alignment and God in this year, 2023, will use us as instrument, but will also use us as his pen and paper. And our lives will be recorded in the books of heaven. And every move we make in this year is consecrated to God. And we decree that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that everything that we will do will be exactly the way it is recorded in heaven concerning our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. I welcome you to the year of the shifts and the year of the builders. I welcome you to the season where God is literally going to take your life and thrust you forward. I ask that God will give you the capacity to bear the multiple transitions you're about to enter into. And as you do so, I pray that God will show you solutions and he will show you how to erect lasting structures in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. You are welcome to this year's prayer reign. You are welcome to the month of January. You are welcome to the new season. You are welcome to a new day. Your family will journey with you. Nothing that belongs to you, none of your possessions will be left behind. But everything that is within the confines of your authority will make this journey with you in the name of Jesus. You will not enter 2023 and be lost, but you will navigate this year in wisdom and understanding in the name of Jesus. When the year ends, it will not be only be you that will see it, but heaven will have a testimony of you that you lived out the story of God in 2023. In Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I will be here again tomorrow. Please, as we go through prayer, please pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. And I'll say it humbly, you know, because it is everything in my life in January. I I constrain, I, 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 I rearrange it for the sake of January, for the sake of prayer. You know, I dedicate the whole of January to doing this with all of you because I know that it is going to set the pace for many things. There were so many testimonies for last year. So um, I also understand that Satan knows, look at all the deadly things that God said we should touch. Things like covenant, blood, angelic host. Ah, ah. You cannot want to teach that, the dragon, and think that's everything. So keep me in your prayers. Ask the Lord to preserve me, preserve my family, you know, so that every day we can rise up in strength to go through this and make this journey. And you see that door that God showed us in that dream, that door will be consistently open in our lives this year. So that when we will be saying, there's a casting down for others, we'll say, ah, but there's a lifting up for me. When people are saying that, ah, oh, true, no people can't give birth, we'll say, ah, me, I'm getting pregnant anyhow. God will change the story completely in the name of our Lord Jesus. Invite your family, invite your friends, to join prayer rain from tomorrow. Tell them to not miss it. Please have your notebooks ready. Write down everything we are saying. Get up and sit down. Invest in the year. See this January as your investment. See it as your Sabbath. Do you understand? Sow this month to the Lord. Don't use it to do any other thing. Don't go to club this January. Holy Ghost fire will continue. Don't go to club. Don't watch any nonsense this Feb, this January. Don't fight. Don't have squabbles in your marriage. Be quick to apologize. Do you understand what I'm saying? This month, if you just discover anything in yourself that is not of the Lord, <laughs> it's a good for you. You won't go to club. Don't go at all, at all, at all. <laughs> yes, so. If you discover anything in your life that is not of God this month, repent quickly. Do you understand? Just be quick to repent. Let me tell you another thing that I do. Thank God my husband bought me new ear pod some days ago. My ear is always plugged in. Just plug in worship. Plug in prayers. Be listening to the prayers. Be declaring them every day. Plug in the Bible. If this month to God, I'm telling you the truth. The remaining 11 months will shock you. Just give it to the Lord. Sow it as seed. Give it as your tithe. Wake up in the night. Wake up in the morning. Pray. And I know that the Spirit of God that has brought us thus far, He will bring us into everything. I'm ready for you. I'm ready. I have notes. We are ready. We'll go there. So God bless you. And I will see you again tomorrow. God bless you. God bless you. Have a powerful day. Stay in prayer. God bless God you. God bless you, Pastor E.C. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Pastor Stephanie, please, over to you. If you have anything you want to say, please, let's release the people. God bless you, Pastor E.C. Um, thank you all for joining us this morning. God bless you, PI. Thank you so much for um, such a powerful time of prayer. Um, I know that we have all been blessed. I'm just going to round up. Um, please, I've shared the link. Um, if you would want to um, partner with POI or give, we encourage and we welcome and invite you to give um, to POI, that's People of Influence, and also to Prayer Rain. So the links I have shared um, there's a direct link to give to people of influence. If you want to give through PayPal, I've shared the link as well to give through PayPal. Um, on one of the links, I'm just going to share it again in the chat. Um, one of the links, please take note that um, you have to remember to click on your respective currency um, so that um, it can, you know, um, pay in the currency that appeals to you because it is um, on default, it is um, Nigerian Naira that is set. Um, so there's a flutter wave link and there is a 
um, PayPal link. We'll continue tomorrow. Um, any information, if you registered, if there's any information that needs to go out, it will be sent via email. Um, there are some materials that we'll be sending as well. Once they are done, you will receive them. Um, for communications, we'll be communicating with you. It's for 21 days, so it's three weeks. Um, so every week we'll be sending out um, emails um, of what to expect and recaps from the previous months, um, as well as receiving your prayer requests and all of that. So if you have any prayer requests, please send to prayerrain.poi at gmail.com. It's the same email, um, it's the same email as the PayPal email. Um, so please um, send us your prayer requests as well. A couple of people said they didn't receive the emails. If you did not receive the email, just send an email, just send a personal email to prayerrain.poi at gmail.com and we will respond thank you all god bless you we're looking forward to the remaining 20 days yes people have asked the question the recording recording will be shared as well so you can plug in again have a good day everyone see you tomorrow and stay in the word stay in prayer and stay fasting bye for now